This is lecture 36, and we're going to be talking about birth and death processes. Okay, so we've already seen one example of a birth and death process. So recall our registration line example where we um, could have at most four students, you know, which is a little unrealistic, but to, just to give you the idea. And so this was an example that we looked at last time. And when we looked at this example, I told you that this was a special case of a larger class of continuous time Markov chains, which were called birth and death processes. And at the time, I told you there were going to be, there's going to be more about that later. And so in this um, lecture, we're going to actually examine those birth and death processes a little bit more in depth. So in general, um, continuous time Markov chains, any continuous time Markov chain that has the requirement that you can only go up by one or down by one state, they're called birth and death processes. So for instance, what that means is if um, you're in state, let's say, five, um, you can only go down to four or up to six, but you can't go from five to seven, for instance. And so a schematic of that might look something like this. So this is... Um, this is a finite continuous time Markov chain in which you have a limiting number n here, but you can go up and down from any of these states. You have no absorbing, absorbing states in this example. And basically what you see here is you can go, like if you're starting at zero, you can go up at a rate of lambda zero, and you could go down at a rate of mu one. So like if I'm in state two, I can either go up to state three at a rate of lambda two or down to state one at a rate of mu two. So these are motivated by population models. So you can think about the transition up, it's like a birth. So the birth rate from state i here is lambda i. So here this birth rate from state 2 was lambda 2. And similarly, you can transition down. So this, this um, transition down has is a, called a death and has a death rate of, in this case, mu 2, in general, mu i. Okay, so um, birth and death processes can be finite, so you can have some limiting number here, capital M, or it can have an infinite space, so you can let it go on infinitely long. And this is the way that they're characterized. So basically, you can only go up or down or stay the same in any small period of time. So here, if I look at delta x, where I'm looking at x at a, at a time t plus some small time, minus what I was at x of t, so at time t, so here I'm thinking about delta t being a small increment of time, then during that small time, one event can happen, and what can happen is I can either increase by one, I can decrease by one, or I can stay the same. So this change in x can either be one, negative one, or zero. And so here when we think about order of delta t, it basically means that this probability of anything else happening in this small time delta t is so infinitesimal that we don't really consider it. So again, if I go up by one, then I'm calling this, uh, I go up at a rate of lambda i. So I have lambda i times delta t would be um, the probability of going from i to i plus one in this case. And then if I go down one here, I go down at a rate of mu i. And here, if I stay the same, then basically this is 1 minus the probability that I actually change. So the probability that I change would be lambda i plus mu i times delta t. And so the probability I stay the same is just 1 minus that. And here again, we're assuming that initially at time 0, that if um, probability of i to i we say is 1 because we're in state i, and uh, 0, i not equal to j. Okay, so we can derive the forward um, Komarov differential equation for this. So let's think about the probability um, j i. So we're going from state i to state j. And j is not at one of the endpoints. So we're thinking about a finite Markov chain. And we're not at the beginning at 0. We're not at the end n. So if we think about what we can do, the probability that we go from i to j is going to be the probability. So here, if we look at this one, this is the probability that we started at j minus 1 and had a birth. So if we go back a couple of slides here, we can get back here to our schematic. So think about for, for any j here. So if I'm looking at the probability 
of um, going to state two, how can I get to state two? Well, I could have a birth from state one or a death from state three, or I could have just stayed there. So that's the kind of idea of what we're thinking about when we're looking at these probabilities here. So here, if we have the probability i to j, so how did I get to state j? Well, the way I got to state j is if I had a birth from the j minus 1 state. So basically, I increased by 1, went from i to j, where i was 1 less. So I had this birth times the probability um, that I was in the um, j minus 1 last time. So then the other way I could have gotten there is I could have had a death from the from the state that was one above. So here I could have had a death or I could have stayed the same. So the probability that um, I was already in state um, J and I just stayed the same. Plus some small probability um, that an infinitesimal probability that something else happened. So basically, I can combine all these into this nice form here. And then I can divide by delta t and let delta t go to 0. And I have this differential equation. So I have this differential equation for um, pij, the change of pij with respect to time. It's just given by this. And so basically, this is I came from the previous one. I came from the one above and went down, and I stayed the same. So let's look at j equals 0. So if we look at j equals 0, there's only one way to get to 0 is if we had a death from state 1. So here, this, or if we stayed the same, right? So if we had a death from state 1 or we stayed the same, it's the only way we can get to 0. Dividing by delta t again and letting delta t go to 0, we have a differential equation for dp 0i. And then if we look at when j is equal to n, then the only way I could have gotten to n or could be in n is if I came from the state that was under it, n minus 1, or I basically stayed the same. So again, dividing by delta t and letting delta t go to 0, I had this differential equation. So for j not equal to 0 or n, I had this differential equation, j equals 0, I have this one, j equals n, I had this one just as a summary. So therefore, what we can look at is D capital P. So if we think about what this is, we think about how these are related is equal to QP, where Q here is this rate. So it has our, so think about our rates, right? So our rate of going from 0 to 1 was lambda 0. Our rate of going from 1 to 0 was if we had a death. Rate going from 1 to 2 was lambda 1, we had a birth. And then remember, our Q matrix always has the negative sum so that our columns sum up to be equal to 0. So let's um, recall a little bit about the three matrices that are associated with continuous time Markov chains. The first one we have is the transition function P of t. Remember, P of t was just this probability that if x of 0 is equal to i, then after some time t, I was in state j. So that's what PIJ of T stood for. We also had the transmission matrix for the embedded chain. So this was where you took out all time dependence. So you had TIJ was just the probability that I'm going to go from state I to state J. So it ignores the time component. It's just what is that probability? And you remember the way that we calculate this TJI was if we, um, if QII is not equal to 0, then we can take um, our negative rate QI, QJI divided by QII. So we could look at um, this gave us our probability that we're going to actually transition from state I to state J. Remember, this is actually going to be a positive number because QII is a negative number. And then the last one that we had was our infinitesimal generator matrix Q. And so here, Q was given by this matrix. So remember, these Qs are our rates. So this was the rate of transitioning from 1 to 2, the rate of transitioning from 1 to 3, et cetera. So for the um, 
the transition matrix for the embedded chain of birth processes. And so remember what we have here. We have, um, this is our Q that we just talked about previously. This was our Q related to our birth and death process. So this is the rate at which we can move from one, one state to another. So if we use this formulation that we have TJI is equal to this formula for our embedded chain, then we can come up with our transition matrix for the embedded chain. So um, think about what we have here. To get, um, we take each of our entries here, we divide it by, um, we take the negative of each of our, our entries, our off diagonal entries, and divide it by um, our QII, our diagonal elements here. And so basically the only thing that can happen if you're in state zero is you can move to state one. If you're in state one, you can either move back to zero or you can move up to state two. So you remember the way that we do this is you take the rate at which you move down or the rate at which you move up and divide it by the sum of all the transitions that you can have happen. So remember this is so the rate that I can move down is mu one and the sum of all the different things that can happen from, from this um, state is lambda one plus mu one. And again, the rate that I can move up to state two is lambda one and that's divided by all these others. And remember for our transition matrix for our embedded chain, the diagonal is always zero. Okay, so just continuing um, this, if lambda is equal, lambda zero is equal to zero. So going back up here to our, our Q, our infinitesimal generator here, if lambda zero is equal to zero, so basically we have a zero here and a zero here. Remember that's perfectly okay because it sums up. So basically what that means is I'm not gonna go, so remember here, if QII is equal to zero, so if lambda zero is equal to zero, then what's that mean? That means that TII is equal to one, which basically means I'm gonna stay in that state. When I look at this transition matrix, I'm going to basically stay in that state. So what we have is for our birth death processes, we have a couple of things. We could have zero be in an absorbing state um, or not. So with an absorbing, without absorbing, we have what we really saw before. When we have absorbing, we basically assume that when we get to state one, we're going to go down to state zero and we're going to stay there forever. So the next time we're going to talk about some limiting distributions for these birth death processes.